Avoid the red zone. What has been lost cannot be retaken. Build a better future together. We strive on a beautiful propaganda poster made by the United States in a world where I believe the Yosemite volcano has erupted and completely made this stuff uninhabitable. That or for some reason there's a zombie infection that is only affecting Canadians. Maybe the virus is in syrup or something. This is actually a world in 1890 and it's a year after yeah a massive Yellowstone eruption. So the whole Manifest Destiny thing has been completed. We've made it to the Pacific Coast here in San Francisco. But what I'm really curious about is some of this American-owned Canadian lands. Did the eruption cause us to invade our neighbors to the north to gather up resources? Or did they really need our help after all this stuff became uninhabitable so we just like vassalized them? Well remember in 1890 they were actually a British colony so we'd be working with the British in this instance. So all the trains and people riding on horseback would have to move down to Texas through Arizona, New Mexico, Mexico, very hot lands to get to San Francisco if they wanted. If all this land has been made completely uninhabitable, then how do people even really exist on the whole continent? I don't think Chicago would have survived if even this land is not to be touched. I guess it'd just be really heavily damaged. This stuff always freaks me out when I do research about it, but it is possible that a cloud could cover a region of 500 miles wide. And then yeah, depending on where that ash were to fall, it would really affect a lot. The Lava Creek ash bed would reach almost all of Texas. For reference, here's the Mount St. Helens ash of 1980. I just spread it around Washington and Idaho, but Yellowstone is a super volcano. I mean, this estimate by USGS has all of the US experiencing at least some ashfall, even places like Florida getting at least one to three millimeters. Looks like we'll all be having to make a vacation in Miami. California is going to be so screwed. The Great Wall of Alexander built in 155 BC. It uses the advantage of the Caucasus Mountains to trap the giants and other ogres north in modern day Russian lands. I don't think this has anything to do with ogres. The Shrek is just on my mind. I think this is like a reference to Attack on Titan, but this would be a really good spot to build, especially considering the time period. You know, we're not like super technologically advanced at 155 BC. So instead of Alexander trying to conquer most of the Middle East, he's decided to fight back against the giants. This would be a really cool spinoff show, actually. Like the Giga Chadness of Alexander being put up against these huge giants. Let's just hope for humanity's sake he lives longer than the age of 33. We'd probably need him. I don't know if these things came from the North Pole or what, but it's very convenient that they're up there in Russia. A Pacific High Speed Railway, and here's a detailed look of what this infrastructure brings to us. First of all, this is a project that took place between several different countries. Massive cooperation had to take place. The US, Russia, Japan, and the country of Korea, all just to name a few. Do notice also I said the country of Korea. There is no North and South, I guess. This is apparently the United Korean flag. How beautiful is that? So this Pacific Highway does a lot of interesting things in Japan, for instance. There are two routes around the island, and then once you get up north, you can move to this Russian island. From there, you can turn down south and go to China or Korea, or you can move north into more of Russian Siberia, all the way connecting to Alaska. From there, wait, I'm not sure why they didn't build just a road straight to Anchorage, but maybe it's easier just to go through the middle of Alaska, get to Canada, all the way down here to LA. And then LA is kind of like Japan. There's a more focused area. You can move along the coast, which will probably take you several more hours than moving through the Fresno Highway. Oh, you can even make it to Vegas. This is obviously some crazy future, maybe in the next 100 years. I love how it's broken down into different lines and railways. Oh, I didn't realize these circles represent major stations and minor stations. They plan to expand this thing beyond China because because you might as well have this stuff go all the way down to Thailand. I'd like to think this is also like a bullet train, so you can really make it from like Vegas to Beijing, China in, I don't really know how fast bullet trains go. Would 21 hours be completely ridiculous on a bullet train? I love how the author here did an in-depth breakdown of how they made this construction happen, and it is actually high-speed rail. 350 miles an hour, that would be amazing. I love how optimistic this is. Unfortunately, I don't know if he realizes just how terrible we are at high-speed rail here in California. I'm trying to build that thing for like 15 years. The Mythical Beasts of Ireland. I actually don't even know if this is an imaginary map or not. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually did believe in all this stuff. Only question is, will any of this match up to the beauty of our Mothman here in the States? All these creatures have actually some really cool designs. I love this idea. Like this is such a fun way to draw little monsters and things like that. I'm sure the person that made this probably has a little bit of backstory behind each one too. I don't know what this fetch is, but it seems interesting. This guy just has a random decay 
decapitated head. No Nessie? I thought that was Nessie. The Salmon of Knowledge. I want to meet that one. Is this some Irish DLC Elder Rings about to drop? This is such a unique map. I really love it. Uh, because the poster has several other countries in his series, and this stuff is literally beautiful, I can confirm that all of those Irish myths were real. Because looking at the US one, I know that these are real. There's our beautiful moth man. Look how fantastic he looks. But there's a crazy amount of stuff that I don't know about. I mean, there's Mothman. I know Boone, Hag, El Muerto, La, La, Yarona, La, Yarona. <laughs> I can't say her name. Here's my favorite. I'm just saying, he out there. He out there somewhere. Oh, you know the Nordics have some wild ones out there. I don't even think I would want to do research on this. Probably give me nightmares for years. You can make a whole cinematic universe based off of all these, like, monsters and things they got going on. Ah, uh, there's Nessie. I knew there was a Scottish one with her. What is the most popular mythical creature? Because the Loch Ness Monster is definitely up there. I mean, specifically. I mean, obviously, there are vampires, dragons, fairies, mermaids. Uh, it would probably be the Kraken or Nessie. I think they're pretty close, at least according to this website. Here's a classroom map of a wide USA. You can tell it's extra wide because even the USA flag is a weird wide aspect ratio. How many stars is that? 72 stars, so I guess we can assume there are 72 states as I scroll down to whatever this is. Yankton. That must be like a thing over here by New York. So in order to make the US much wider, they didn't change much of the states along the coast. Those are all the same, except when you go a little bit, whoa, look at this Florida panhandle. So they squeezed in two new places here, AD and CE. Really wide Tennessee. I thought for a second there, this was a West, West Virginia. I'm just going to call it that from now on, West, West Virginia. How are there two Michigan peninsulas? And look at this upper peninsula. Oh, I think that became its own. No, this is technically Michigan. These are other things, CD and PO. Ohio's also been split up. This is actually a really amazing map. So this is where they really fit in a ton of states in the flat area, even more flatness from the middle of our continent. Just waiting to get to Montana. Wow, it took us a while to get to Montana. Finally, a big Idaho. Oh, an Idaho that's actually chopped up Washington and Oregon. Which, yeah, I mean, why not? Why doesn't Idaho just take some of those stuff? To think that each one of these new states has its own original flag, too. Like, that's amazing. Look at big old Texas. Now, that is a crazy Texas. Also, even more of the cities are included. How can you even come up with all these names? Water Pump City. I like that. Texaco and El Paso. So, that's still there. I just want this for the water wide Oklahoma. Just why not? Some of the new states and flags are Mesa Verde. Oh, cool. So some of even the old states that are a part of the Union already got an update to their flag. Thank you. It's so much more beautiful. Louisiana, I'm liking that. Long Island separated themselves from New York. We also have the all-too-famous Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln is like a Pacific thing that we've always talked about. Oh, Lincoln is here between Montana and the Dakotas. Klondike? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you telling me that candy is actually a state? Klondike is a source of wealth or something else valuable, and it comes from the Yukon Territory of Canada that saw a gold rush. I always just thought it was some random candy name that they just picked. Okay, Puerto Rico is also a state, and then we have Hawaii, which I think has more islands, it looks like. That's a thick Hawaii. All these new state flags, and yet Hawaii still keeps the British copyright symbol in the upper left-hand corner. I like that, Florida. Oh, East Dakota, that's what you have now. East Dakota. Oh, you're going to want to get rid of that uh, chat. We've got a weird Canadian slash Quebec flag up this way. Cadillac, I think, taking some influence from the Maryland flag, maybe? Westylvania. Probably have some weird vampires there. West Dakota, West Connecticut. You got to assume in a thick, wide world, we would be including more directionals things in our state, like West, East. We just kind of aren't very original with our names. Love just saying North Carolina. Oh, thank you. Bringing back the orange in the New York flag. Well, I guess I should say the New York state flag. The New York city flag looks good. Such a fan of orange and flags. Missouri, three bears in a canoe. This is literally one of the most beautiful maps I've seen in a long time. Nice job. A map of the Papers, Please world. Has any other game inspired more things like this than Papers, Please? It's crazy. That reminds me. I just really need to play that again. So if you remember in the history, these two countries just came out of a six-year war, and it's somewhat still volatile. So isn't this where the game takes place in one of these places, I guess. But the inclusion of these flags are really cool. I like this one the most, though. I love those two-headed eagles. Nice work from these two. A map of an inverted British Isles, the United Kingdom of Great Ireland. Oh, and Northern Britain. So basically, in this world, it looks like uh, instead of Ireland being separated, there's a Northern Britain, which is like the United 
Kingdom, and then the Republic of Britain, which is doing its own thing. It's its own independent country. But there are still four kingdoms that make up the United Kingdom of Great Ireland. This time, it's just Northern Britain, Ulster, Leinster, and Munster. Instead of like in our universe, England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. So in this timeline, will the Republic of Britain run out of tea or crumpets instead of potatoes? Oh, even these islands are included as well. What about the Isle? Oh, no Isle of Man? Can we assume this Irish kingdom also made the United States out there? A map of Australasia or a universe where Australia and Antarctica switched places. This is one of those things that you could have done like secretly on a world map and it probably would have gone over a lot of Americans heads. What's funny about this is that Australia is a giant desert and technically speaking so is Antarctica. The Sahara Desert is considered the third largest desert. It's the largest hot desert but Antarctica is uh yeah it's the biggest. How do you define desert? Uh, the term is arid desert for like the traditional hot desert that you think of. There's also a polar desert. I like how this includes the climate of this new continent. Actually this looks more habitable than our Australia in our world. I mean yeah it's pretty hot deep in there it looks like but look at the vegetation they have along the coastline. You could probably squeeze a couple more than 25 million people. I like that they kept Tasmania in the corner that really adds a nice touch. I wonder if Antarctica would still have all those deadly animals. USA if it went full imperialist. So not only does it have the lower 48 states but it also has all of Canada and a parts of northern Mexico. I am in full support of California getting its rightful land, Baja California. You can't name it that and expect us not to take it. I don't think it should be one giant state though. I think it should be still like Southern Cal- This will be the new Southern California. So not only do they take states in the north away from Mexico, but also the Yucatan Peninsula. So what is this red telling me? Are these just like partially integrated stuff into the country, but not fully yet? Like Puerto Rico is in our world. So we do have all of Greenland. So we stole that away from Denmark. We also have Iceland, it looks like, amazingly enough. There's the Franklin Territory, the Mackenzie. So yeah, this stuff hasn't been fully part of the Union yet. Tons of islands in the Pacific, pretty much everything. We got those away from the French and British. Population 510 million. We also have the most GDP in the world. Yeah, literally all the islands are now ours. I didn't even know about Clipperton Island, a United States outline islands. Why did we just randomly take... Nicaragua. Out of all the Central American countries, and and also we kept Panama a territory. You think we'd want that as a state just to control the canal? Puerto Rico is still a territory, still not a part of the states. We kept the Philippines, never gave them their independence. I wonder if we took anything from Japan. We, I mean, we have some, but anything on mainland Japan? The Guyana territory, I don't know why we took that. Pretty much anything that a European had before, we stole it away. Big old chunk out of Antarctica, but the most important thing, we have our moon stuff. We are sharing that with China, Russia, and I'm assuming there's some Europeans in there. This is like pretty much the American Empire. Oh, and I guess that's why they chose to go with this flag instead. I like that some of the Canadian provinces were renamed. Like, we're not going to call you Ontario and Quebec. You're just going to be East Canada and West Canada. Alberta stays the same. That's like the one place that maintained it. Maybe Manitoba too. I guess some of them maintain their name, but I think it's funny that we just like did that out of spite almost. Ah, uh, here are all the colors included. That's nice. The great 2021 Austrian general elections, or what if Austria-Hungary never broke up after World War One? Looks like the elected minister president is the former leader of Croatia. Oh, I used to love her. Me and her go way back. So in the red, we have territories that voted Social Democrat. In the black, we have the Christian Social Party as well, which looks like they won a majority here. Well, they won a majority of the territory. That doesn't necessarily mean they won a majority of their population. Where's the population center? Is that Budapest? Vienna? Oh, there's a breakdown of the smaller cities. I see Prague. The People's Party of Austria here in blue, which is actually kind of all over the place. What could that mean? I thought the People's Party of Austria would be more in, I don't know, modern day Austria. The yellow are people that are voting for the new Habsburg alliance. I don't know what that is. Are you guys trying to go back to the Habsburg days, perhaps? Reinstall the chins, the mighty chins. Finally, orange is just the left. Just boom. There's a couple of just the left out here. So the Christian Social Party won a majority of seats, I think think maybe barely 51% and you guys are now going to have to uh, unite against them or something. Is that how governments, you know, I'm a dumb American. I only know about two parties and here's a breakdown of what politically some of these parties would be like. Oh yeah, the Guyana Republic, population 1.6 million. I'm all for this. They've just united this entire region of South America. There's Bolivar, Suriname, France obviously has been kicked out and I'm liking this flag too. Simple yet effective. Might as well steal away uh, Trinidad and uh, 
Tobago. Venezuela just ceased to exist, so maybe this is actually in the future. Maybe this is telling us something. We can expect to see this very soon, perhaps. What if the Eureka Rebellion succeeded and Australia went full-on USA? So basically, we have the United Provinces of Australia, which includes New Zealand as well as all of New Guinea, or Papa. I mean, the, the entire islands. They even have East Timor. So they were kicking out all the Europeans. Of course, the Dutch would probably... Oh, this is actually broken up too. Did this United Provinces of Australia have something to do with this? Kicking out all the European powers. They definitely must have divided this country to keep them weaker, I'm assuming. This is just Javan and Sumatran Union. Some Sumatra, something like that. I think in this world, they'd have even more islands in the Pacific as well. Why not grab those? Get Tonga. I mean, the map doesn't include that stuff. Samoa. Also, there's more than five Australian states here in the mainland. So the Eureka Rebellion actually took place in our world in 1854. It was instigated by gold miners. So this is already when the USA had their independence, so maybe there were some people feeling pretty inspired. It was obviously a pretty short conflict here. Also, I guess, very one-sided as well. So maybe in this timeline, even though the event itself was kind of minor, it led to way bigger things things. It led to the Australian population fighting back. And again, they might have been inspired by everything that was going on in the Western Hemisphere. A lot of the Spanish colonies were being freed around this time. You can get New Zealand's help involved as well. I mean, would the British really want to send that much all the way on this side of the globe? Probably need a lot more population though, somehow. Just to start taking things away from others. And big thanks to my Patreon supporters. Young Waifu. Fat Nuts. Gerbil Boy. Why am I doing this? Sussy Melody. Rye the Pie. Nora the Bald Free Smiley Philip Lover. Philip R.F. Orton 5610. Drews. Argentinian Alex Grandpa. Mega Chad, Alfonso M6, Fat, Norwal, After Hours, Barnes, Bring CW, Back Polar Canadian Ball, Union, I Stole Drew's Pet Dogs, Luxembourg Majestic Lover, Unicorn, Max Cooper, Mick Blorf, and Mimoshiki.